This is Graffiti as a Form of Communication, a Sociological Approach to Street Art by me, Jared Lennick. Graffiti has been used as a method of communication for years and has retained a high prevalence in a time where many other means of broadcasting messages exist. At the same time, it is illegal in most places and because of that, the expressionistic value is convoluted causing people to see it strictly as a crime. Regardless, Graffiti is an effective way to push a viewpoint and shed a light on the ideas that stem from various subcultures. Graffiti is the most prevalent form of street art. However, much of the artistic meaning gets missed when graffiti is brought up. There is an ongoing debate on whether graffiti can exist as a creative medium of communication or if it should be rurally sold out as vandalism. By definition, graffiti consists of writing, drawing, and painting words or images in or on a public place. There is a separation in what constitutes graffiti as being authentic or fake, fake being pieces that are commissioned or found in galleries. I've studied several articles examining different perspectives on the authentic graffiti and that offer translations for the messages being communicated through it. There were a variety of ways pieces expressed thoughts of their creators, and many pieces were shown to have layers of meanings that typically boiled down to some sort of societal issue. Because really, what louder way is there to expose a societal issue than to plaster it in full color on the side of a building for everyone to see? While authentic graffiti includes work that has been done illegally in a public space, many hold the belief that that doesn't hold it back from being a carrier of messages. From a direct approach, visual stimulation and aesthetics play a large role in what catches our attention. With this in mind, at the surface, graffiti should be able to express an emotion or convey an idea simply by the choice of color or the placement of the piece, which mostly tends to be true. Brewer and Kelso studied hundreds of works of graffiti on buildings, bathroom stalls, and other public spaces and developed an analysis that splits a literal view and a sort of deeper psychoanalytic view of each piece. Where some graffiti was crude, derogatory, and vulgar on the surface, it could express that an individual or an entire subculture potentially feels threatened, wants to rethink subordination, or explore alternatives to a current situation. On the flip side, sarcastic and personally directed graffiti has been found to promote rebellious behavior and encourage questioning the status quo. The pieces shown demonstrate a mixture of these characteristics. The work on the right is relatively crude and is attempting to display a possible disdain for industrialized societies that are wrecking part of our wildlife in the process of achieving their goal. Um, and the other shows an angry message directed at males and at its core can expose sexism or inequality in the way that men and women are treated. A part of why graffiti is effective is due to its ability to express social and oppositional actions. The power of a law-breaking performance draws attention to what the artist would like to be shared. Defiance is a way to not just get the attention of everyday citizens, but also those who potentially hold power, like officers and other government workers. Columbini studied the duality of graffiti that exists with it being labeled art against crime. Both him and Reuter, as well as others, determined that the idea of it being a cr crime actually helps drive motivation, as it contains a quote-unquote, stop-you-in-your-tracks type of theme. It does not necessarily work in winning the favorability of the public, though, but the attention is a large part of why graffiti still exists when a medium like social media is easily accessible. The street art chosen for this slide contains the sarcastic message mocking the fact that graffiti is illegal and contributing to the viewpoint that it wouldn't be that way if it wasn't effective. Street art is a way to independently broadcast a message without any regulation, at least temporarily. Reuter focused on Egypt during a revolutionary transition within politics and found that a motive to partake, partake in the creation of street art is that it actively defies official media. While you can get the same message shared on a virtual timeline, it can be quickly swept under the thousands of other posts and go unnoticed. The anonymity plays a factor as well. 
in a place where government bosses the official media around and has the power to regulate it. Street art is essential for communicating opposing viewpoints and supporting others who may share the same. Graffiti in this sense can be an important tool to defy corrupt politics, propaganda, and display feelings of those that are underrepresented in traditional media. You can see in the two pieces included in this slide that they are both exposing you know, the troubled youth of these areas. Although there is no context to these pictures, they both are showing that these the youth is, you know, subject to violence or some sort of corruption. Alonzo has developed categories to help comprehend what different forms of graffiti are trying to present. Other articles looked at followed suit and used a categorical system of organization based on a combination of style, location, and potential creators. There are several genres of what of graffiti that all associate with different primary functions and that all have the potential to be mixed with the extensive list of sub-classifications. For example, tagging, which comes from gang graffiti, looked at initially through a first-person view, may have the function of territorial dominance. From a collectivistic view, however, it may display a larger message of social and cultural discourse. Prevalent law enforcement, prevalent anti-law enforcement graffiti in the 90s may appear to incite violence or be anti-institutional towards law enforcement. But from a collectivistic view, it shows that there is an issue with the treatment of minorities from police. The sociological view of graffiti shows that even the most vulgar pieces still serve a function in relationship to society being carriers of messages revealed when they are looked at as a whole. And that concludes my presentation on a quick review of some of the things I looked at in my literature review. Um, here is a list of the sources I referenced in this video in case you're curious on going to look at any more of the things I discussed. And thank you for watching.